Hey guys, Snowflarky's Emos here today with a new deck profile. This is my Ancient Gear Trap Control deck profile. This is a unusual build of Ancient Gears that focuses more on using very powerful trap cards that we have access to, namely Skill Drain at 3, to win the game. So it doesn't have your standard fusion combos you'll see in a lot of Ancient Gear deck profiles. And this is a, this is a kind of deck style I've been enjoying playing casually this format uh, because of cards like Skill Drain being at 3. Just taking advantage of it. Now do note that as far as trap control style decks go, this one is certainly not going to be the most competitive archetype. Uh, things like Blue Eyes Trap Control, uh, a Phantasm Spiral Trap Card Stun uh, Trap Control deck or something like that would be generally more effective, maybe even the new Legendary Ocean stuff, um, as far as the kind of best decks to take advantage of this playstyle. But to have this playstyle at an even lower power level, you can show off some cool ancient gear monsters, and uh, you know, figured that is a cool enough reason for me to put together. Play it casually, gets me some wins, so I'm pretty happy with it. Let's get into the profile. Starting off, I am playing two copies of Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon. This is our big Ancient Gear boss monster of the deck. It's a 3,000 attack Ancient Gear monster that, of course, uh, has a great effect that uh, when this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate spell or trap cards and monster effects until the end of the damage step, which is pretty cool. Means you're pretty protected from battle traps, of course. And of course, at the end of the damage step, if this card attacks, you can destroy a spell or trap card on the field. So pretty cool. Pops a spell or trap card, which is pretty useful. That'll get you some card advantage. And uh, But the big thing about it is this is a 3,000 attack monster. This is a deck where we're playing skill drain. So once skill drain's on the field, the stats mean everything. And this is going to be a 3,000 attack monster that we can recur. Three is a bit too bricky, but two is just perfectly fine. We only need to see one, and we want to make sure that we always have one on board. So, you know, we don't want to lose it. Two is a good number for the Reactor Dragon. Next up, I am playing three copies of Ancient Gear Wyvern. Ancient Gear Wyvern uh, is a pretty good Ancient Gear monster. It's a four-star 1700. If you don't have Skill Drain up yet, uh, when this card is normal or special summon, you can add an Ancient Gear card from your deck to your hand. So that usually gets you the trap card we're playing, Ancient Gear Reborn, as it's pretty essential to this kind of strategy. And, uh, or if you have Gear Town online, you can grab Ancient Gear Catapult. Either way, it's uh, good stuff. Just keep in mind, though, that when you use this effect, you cannot set cards for the rest of this turn. So any back row you have in your hand, you definitely want to be setting before you use Wyvern's effect. And you're going to have to wait one turn before you can set your Ancient Gear Reborn, if that's what you search for. 1700 attack is pretty solid. And, of course, if this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate monster effects until the end of the damage step. So pretty cool uh decent effect uh now i know mostly we're looking to turn off effects with skill drain but if effects aren't off yet that is pretty good and we'll definitely run it and of course next up i am playing three copies of ancient gear knight this is just another ancient gear name that can be normal norman uh normal summoned pretty easy and uh, 1800 attack is the highest attack on a monster that can be normal summoned without uh, Gear Town being on the field. And this isn't a very Gear Town centric deck. So, uh, you know, having it is just fine enough. Uh, it'll work until we get a hold of our Reactor Dragon. Um, it has a, of course, Gemini effect where you can use your extra summon to summon this card again. And then, of course, if this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards. But mostly we just want it for the 1800 attack uh on an ancient gear name and that is it for the monsters very low monster count because this is a trap card based card of demise style deck next for spells i am playing three copies of gear town this is a the ancient gear field spell of course that says both players can normal summon ancient gear monsters with one less tribute which is nice that means reactor dragon only needs one tribute instead of two and that's nice because that can help you get dead reactor dragons out of your hand but more importantly if this card on the field is sent to the graveyard you can special summon an ancient gear monster 
from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So that's pretty nice. There's ways to proc that in this deck, and that means we can just pull Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon right out of the deck. Or if all our reactors are out, we can pull out a Wyvern, search another card, generate some advantage that way. So it's pretty cool. Car we want to see, so we are playing three of it. Next up, I'm playing two copies of Ancient Gear Catapult. Ancient Gear Catapult says while you control no monsters, you can target a face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon an Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning condition. Which is pretty nice. We'll be using that to pull out Reactor Dragon. And the card we ideally want to be popping most of the time is Gear Town. So that will be pulling us out another monster. So that means Gear Town and Ancient Gear Catapult can pull both our Reactor Dragons right out of the deck. That's nice because even if they get removed, we'll have access to them for our reborning loop. And that's pretty cool. And then also, uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target a face-up card you control and destroy it. So if this card is already gone, uh, you can use it to uh, destroy Gear Town. You don't get the summon off of Catapult, but you get the summon off of Gear Town, which is still worth it. And of course, but when you do that graveyard effect, you can special summon an Ancient Gear token which is just a machine type monster zero attack zero defense but can give you uh, extra tribute to get a reactor dragon on board uh, stuff like that pretty cool it's a level one so you could play link karibo just awesome stuff uh, definitely a card you know we're only going to resolve it once so i don't want to see three but two is pretty cool Next, I'm playing one copy of Supply Squad. Once you have your Ancient Gear Reborn loop going, uh, you know, you're going to constantly have a monster back on board thanks to Ancient Gear Reborn. But if you just throw in one copy of Supply Squad, uh, you can get extra draws off of it too. Now, Supply Squad isn't a card that does a lot, so I only want to see one. But once you have it established, it is a nice just card to kind of secure your resources. And uh, for that, I've been playing it at one and enjoying it. Next, a copy of Terraforming. Terraforming, of course, is a spell card that searches a field spell. So, uh, you know, easy peasy. Grab Gear Town. Next up, I am playing three copies of Pot of Extravagance. Uh, There's a trap card based deck where we're not using our extra deck a lot, so we're turning that extra deck into card advantage. Uh, we banish three to six uh, cards from our extra deck face down and draw a card for every two that we banished. Pretty cool. That uh, basically turns six extra deck cards into two cards, and we like that. Now we can't use any other drawing effects for the rest of the turn, which is relevant with Supply Squad, but Supply Squad get uh, popping off usually more on our opponent's turn, so perfectly fine. Next, I'm playing one copy of Fury of the Kiryu Shin. If you don't like Supply Squad, this is a card you can consider running two of, because Torrential Tribute is very powerful in this deck, and this spell card certain just searches Torrential Tribute. It has a secondary effect that protects water monsters from being destroyed by card effect. Not relevant here, because everything we play is Earth, but a card that searches Torrential Tribute is good enough for me. Next, playing one copy of Pot of Duality, a uh, pretty good uh, card to have to dig a certain card out of your deck if you're not going to be special summoning on your turn, and oftentimes you will not be doing that, so uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, only playing one, though, because you do kind of want to try to get the Catapult playoff, and I don't want to see this card if I can't use it. And, of course, next, uh, one copy of Card of Demise. Once you have things set up, you got a low monster count. Card of Demise can easily dig you three cards from your deck, which is pretty nice. Essentially, this uh, card just says draw cards until you have three in your hand. Also, for the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, your opponent takes no damage. During the end phase of the turn, you send your entire hand to the graveyard, which isn't a big deal because we're playing mostly spells and traps. You can just set them instead. And, of course, you can only activate card demise once per turn, and you cannot special summon during the turn you activate this card. Not a big deal. You know, it's fine if we're uh, just playing Wyvern and whatnot. Just know that uh, if you play Wyvern before you play Card of Demise, you're not going to be able to set the spell or trap cards you draw. So keep that in mind and play smart with Card of Demise in this deck. And that is it for the spell cards. Next, getting into our trap cards, I am playing three copies of Ancient Gear Reborn. This is a really cool trap card that says once per turn, if you control no monsters, you can target an Ancient Gear monster in your graveyard and special summon it. 
and if you do it gains 200 attack even if this card leaves the field you can only control one ancient gear reborn so this is kind of the the card that makes this kind of deck play style work it essentially means that with these low monsters we can just keep pulling them back out of the graveyard so if we have a reactor dragon on the field it gets destroyed well we can keep getting reactor dragon back and honestly a reactor of 3000 attack monster that keeps coming back especially if we also have our established skill drain on the field is a lot more of a pain to deal with and uh it's pretty nice um just keeps it going allows us to you know torrential blow up our own board during an opponent's turn to disrupt combos uh easy without much punishment so very cool card definitely the card you're going to want to be searching off wyvern i wish a lot more archetypes had a card like this it'd be pretty cool but uh you know i'm gonna do what i can with the ones that do uh, next up, I'm playing three copies of Skill Drain. This is our deck's win condition. Um, you know, Skill Drain simply turns off all monster effects while the monsters are face up on the field. At that point, it just makes the stats matter, and 3,000 attack is pretty big and reliable. Hard to get over that when we don't have monster effects comboing you into bigger monsters or monster effects that are removing monsters. Uh, so pretty good. Uh, this is the reason this deck kind of works right now casually. We can just play three skill drain and, uh, you know, hurt our opponent without hurting ourselves too much. And that's why uh, skill drain is a pretty good card. Definitely, uh, you definitely see me taking advantage of this, playing a lot of clowny decks while we have it at three, because uh, it might not be at three for long. Next up, I'm playing three copies of Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute is a really great trap card. When a monster is summoned, destroy all monsters on the field. Pretty cool. When your opponent's trying to summon a bunch of monsters, you can interrupt them at a crucial point and wipe their entire board, which is pretty nice. And even if we lose monsters, it's usually not a big deal because Ancient Gear Reborn can just give them back. That's part of the strength is being able to take care of Torrential Tribute. Uh, you know, being able to use Torrential Tribute. We want to see it. We want to have those timed, wipe the board, keep it open for us to be attacking and poking directly. Uh, our secondary win condition here, another Floodgate, goes in Match. All our monsters are Earth, so goes in Match is a pretty nice card. Each player can only control one attribute of monster and send all other face-up monsters they control to the graveyard. So pretty good. A lot of, you know, combo decks that are link climbing or building extra deck boards have lots of different attributes they have to go into, and goes in Match can be very disruptive. Um, plenty of other floodgates you can play in the spot, something like Rivalry of the Warlord if you want to do the same for types, because everything's just machine. Summon limit if you want just the safest, no more than two summons a turn, you'll never go over that, your opponent will have to deal with that. Um, just a number of different things you can play, but uh, another floodgate slot, floodgates are uh, how this deck wins games. Um, so we're trying to lock our opponent out of doing things, and then just keep Keep firing at them with, uh, you know, really big ancient gear monster. Um, and that is good enough. Next, I'm playing three copies of Solemn Strike. Uh, maybe uh, considering one of these cards uh, for another Floodgate copy, just because uh, Floodgates are the big win con. But this is a very nice card to have. When a monster would be special summoned or a monster effect is activated, you can pay 1,500 life points to negate the summon or activation, and if you do, destroy the card. This is a pretty nice card to have if you were running Summon Limit over Goes in Match 2, because you can wait till your opponent has already summoned twice, and then they maybe extra deck into one monster that you solemn. Then afterward, you can flip Summon Limit so they can't uh, summon any more monsters. They have to pass their turn with an open board, allowing you to poke their life points directly, so pretty cool. And yeah, just, uh, you know, paying life points ain't a big deal. Negating an effect or a special summon is pretty awesome. Some strike, it's a good card. Next up, we are playing three copies of Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment is a pretty cool card uh, that is a counter trap that, uh, you know, we pay half our life points to negate a summon or a spell or trap card activation. Pretty cool. Solemn Judgment really makes our floodgates more powerful because, you know, so when we have skill drain on the field, we'll win a lot of games just because our opponent can't do anything. But usually decks have one or two non-monster effect ways to out skill drain. But uh, suddenly, if we have a Solemn Judgment to protect us from that out, well, the game becomes very, very winnable. And uh, I honestly think Solemn Judgment at three is why 
cards like Skill Drain at three are even more powerful because we have three Solemn Judgments to protect them. Makes it, uh, you know, makes it so even when they draw the out, uh, they can't necessarily out it. Um, very good card. Playing it at a crucial moment can halt an opponent's turn when you've got some floodgates up. And, uh, you know, anything you can do to get your opponent in that open board state is pretty good. For my last trap card in my main deck, I'm playing two copies of Heavy Storm Duster. This one is more of a metagame call for my group. I play against a lot of folks. Uh, this is a casual deck that I play for casual duel nights. And I got a lot of folks who are playing uh, more decks that have spell and trap cards. So Heavy Storm Duster is a very nice addition. I can target up to two spell or traps on the field and destroy them. I cannot... Uh, conduct my battle phase the turn I activate this which doesn't matter if I'm playing it on my opponent's turn if I'm popping two set back row or using it to reactively pop a uh, spell or trap card that's going to search something something like that and what's kind of nice about this is heavy storm duster can also pop my own gear town to get me a free summon which is pretty cool um, if you're not going up against folks who are playing back row or spell and trap cards in general like a lot of the metagame you can sub this out for just two more floodgates something like summon limit you know one of those things that's going to win you the game or uh, another torrential tribute type uh, trap card something like proof of powerlessness which you can run with the reactor dragon or blind obliteration i think is pretty good is, is decent enough uh, if you want that effect but in a weaker version um, pots of duality there's certainly things you can sub but this is a nice card if you have to face up against spell and trap card users like myself and that is it for our main deck just to quickly talk about the extra deck in this deck we're not really making extra deck monsters so we are simply using our extra deck as a way to side in waking the dragon waking the dragon is a great trap card to be considering siding in your trap card based deck uh, because if this set card in its owner's control on, on the field is uh, sent to the graveyard uh, or banished because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a monster from your deck or extra deck. So, uh, you know, in this current format, we can get Harpy's Feather Duster, we can get Lightning Storm and lose all your back row. But if you have Waking the Dragon, then you have a contingency for that happening and can possibly win the game off of it uh, if you summon the right card in the right matchup so pretty cool to have an option and since our extra deck isn't good for much else we're just going into that my uh, waking the dragon choices of course are three copies of last warrior from another planet if they pop waking the dragon on an on an empty board uh, this card simply says that neither player can summon monsters which is pretty cool they can't summon anything if they don't have a way to out this you'll just poke them down with it till they lose it does destroy all monsters you control when it's summoned so do keep that in mind but usually not a big deal for such a good condition next up i'm playing three copies of naturia exterio this is a great card against decks that really need spell or trap cards to be going off because if you have a card in your graveyard then naturia exterio is just uh you know negates every spell and trap in the game by just uh, when a spell or trap is activated you banish a card from your grave send the top card of your deck to the graveyard and negate and destroy that card it's not once per turn you know it's reactive you can do it on either player's turn so something like a ritual deck you know something that really needs spells can just get hardcore stopped by exterior next we got raid raptor ultimate falcon at three copies uh, this is a 3,500 attack monster that is unaffected by card effects, so that makes it pretty hard to deal with. It means you need a kaiju or a way to get over it by battle, which can be hard for a lot of decks to do, especially if you got other things to uh, back you up and protect you. And uh, in some matchups, that will just win you the game outright if they're not prepared to handle such a card. Next up, I got three copies of Geomathmech Final Sigma. It's Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon, but with 500 less attack. And it's unaffected by all card effects except math mech cards while in the extra monster zone. We can gladly put it in the extra monster zone, so not a big deal. Uh, has a little secondary effect that's pretty nice when it does uh, battle damage to your opponent by battling a monster. The battle damage is doubled, so that can come in handy. Uh, definitely useful to uh, burst a lot of damage at once if they have a low attack monster on the field for you to hit. And then last, I'm playing three copies of Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. 4,500 attack monster that cannot be destroyed or targeted by card effects. Not as good as being unaffected, but uh, still pretty good. Uh, and it's a 1,000 extra attack, which is pretty cool. It also has an effect where instead of attacking, you can just destroy a card on the field. So that flexibility is really nice. Good to have. And that makes the 15 card extra deck. All those cards are maxed out at three copies so that something is left 
after we extravagance. Uh, the only thing I will say that's worth thinking about is you could play three copies of Link Karibo instead of one of those if you want to have something to do with your Ancient Gear token off of Ancient Gear Catapult. So that is it for my Ancient Gear Trap Control deck profile. It's a really cool way for me to easily play some Ancient Gear monsters with a strategy that I've already invested in from other decks. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there are way more competitive engines to use for a Trap Control style deck than Ancient Gears. But in a casual setting, this deck has been good enough to win me quite a few games. So I figured it was good enough to show off. Um, you know, it's just a cool, inexpensive way to show off some cards. And if you got a casual environment, it'll definitely give you some wins. And it allows you to play a trap card based, uh, a trap card stun based play style, but at a lower power level because, uh, you know, it's less punishing to other, you know, other jank matchups you may be uh, encountering when you're playing for fun and whatnot. So let me know what you think. Love to know what your favorite Ancient Gear monster is or Ancient Gear play style is. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.